Today, we want to learn about alternating series. Alternating series is a series whose terms are positive and negative alternatingly. There is an alternating series test, which tests whether the given series converges or diverges. Let's say the given series is summation one to infinity, negative one to n minus one bn. If we write it term by term, then it is one b1 minus b2 plus b3 minus b4 and so on. So when each term is positive, then the alternating series gives us the criteria when the series converges. The alternating series converges if the series satisfies two conditions. One is decreasing. So the next term is smaller than previous term for all n. Secondly, not only decreasing the each term, when we take the limit um, that should go to zero. What will happen when it satisfies a alternating series test is like this. Let's say this is zero and S1 is the first partial sum. So that is just B1. And the series terms will decrease. So if we think about S2, then S2 will be smaller than S1 because you are subtracting B2, but B2 is smaller than B1. So that'll stay positive. But it'll be like this. So this amount is the same as B1. And if you subtract it, then you, you will go to the left and uh, this amount is B2. And this three is smaller than B2. So when you add B3, that will not cross B1. So B3, add B3. And then that is third partial sum. The same reasoning will go on. So the sequence decreases. And so when we subtract B4, we will get to S4, but S4 is larger than S2 and so on. And so it'll go on and on like this. And so, this distance would shrink forever and converge it to some point between these points. So the alternating series will converge. So something will go on and uh, 
the sum of the series will be somewhere in between. Let's do some examples. Determine whether the alternating series converges or not. First problem is one minus one half plus one third minus one fourth. It goes like this. And then when we formulate it, that'll be summation one to infinity, definitely one over N, right? One over N, but negative one to the what power? N minus one power. because the first term is one. So in this case, bn is one over n, right? When we check uh, the alternating series test condition, you have to check whether the series decreases and, and then if that decreases, then the limit should go to zero. But you can uh, check whether limit goes to zero or not first, it depends on the series. We think about B n plus one, then that is one over n plus one. And when we compare that with B n, which is one over n, bn is certainly smaller than, bn plus one is smaller than uh, bn. So that is obviously decreasing. Secondly, when we take a limit for bn, that becomes limit n goes to infinity one over n. So n gets larger and larger. So one over n gets smaller and smaller and approaches zero. So it satisfy the alternating series test. So the series converges. In the exam, you have to uh, verify both condition and state uh, the test name. But it is more likely uh, to give you what test do you have to use. So now we wanna think about n equals one to infinity minus one to the n power three n over four n minus one. So alternating series test, test whether that is decreasing and or and uh, whether the limit goes to zero. So in this case, we can of course check whether this is decreasing, but um, obviously that would decrease. However, if you think about the limit of Bn, then you will realize that limit of Bn doesn't converge. So Bn, 
is the part which doesn't include minus one to the n power. So three n over four n minus one. So limit n goes to infinity b n, and then limit n goes to infinity three n over four n minus one. So I said you only care about um, the top degree term in the fraction, the fast, fastest growing term in the numerator and denominator. And then that is the limit. So limit n goes to infinity, 3n over 4n. And then that is 3 fourths. We realize that that is not equal to zero. So it doesn't satisfy the alternating series test. So that means the series diverges. Since this is an alternating series, we uh, try to figure out whether the series converges or not by using the alternating series test, but with the test for divergence, uh, we still can verify that the given series diverges. So we can use the test for divergence. So limit n goes to infinity, negative one to the n power three n over 4n minus 1, that doesn't exist. Because if we just think about the absolute value, then the absolute value will convert 3 fourths. This is a alternating sequence. And so when n gets larger and larger, it'll oscillate between 3 fourths and negative 3 fourths. So the limit doesn't exist. And so the series diverges. Let's do the next problem. The next problem is about n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one times n squared over n cubed plus one. So this is Bn. Let's check the second condition first. And then n goes to infinity, n squared over n cubed plus one. That goes to zero because just uh, we know the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. The next thing we want to check is the term n squared over n cubed plus one decreases. If you plug in the number with the n plus one, it becomes a lot harder to check. So what we want to do is we assume that the sequence is defined from the rational function x squared over x cubed plus one. Then 
when we differentiate if the uh, derivative is larger than zero, uh, smaller than zero, then that decreases. So f prime, this is the fractions derivative. So f over g prime equals f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. So f prime, the denominator is x cubed plus one squared. The first one, the numerator's derivative is 2x times denominator x cubed plus one minus, leave the uh, numerator as it is, x squared times 3x squared, the denominator's derivative. So it becomes like x cubed plus one squared. And then that is two x to the fourth power plus two x minus, you multiply those two, then three x to the fourth power. So, Denominator is x cubed plus one squared. Two minus three will make minus x to the fourth power plus two x. And then that is x cubed plus one squared. The uh, common factor is x and two minus x cubed. So what we wanna show is uh, whether this is less than zero or not, because it should be decreasing. So less than or equal to zero. So we notice that the denominator is something squared. So that is always greater than zero. So we want to think about the sign of the denominator, uh, numerator. So numerator is two uh, x times two minus x cubed. This is the numerator. Other thing we have to think about is uh, this is n equals one, right? So the numbers we are plugging in here is greater than or equal to one. So since n is greater than or equal to one. We consider the region where x is greater than or equal to one. So when x is greater than or equal to one, when we look at this, this part is always positive. for x greater than or equal to one. So what we wanna think about is um, two minus x cubed is less than zero. That is what we want to think about. So if f prime of x, f uh, the function f is decreasing because 
all other parts are positive and the only way this become the f prime becomes negative is when um, two minus x cubed is negative. So we add x cubed on both sides. So we have x uh, two is less than x cubed. So x cubed is greater than two. And then we think about uh, cubed root on both sides. So cubed root of x cubed is greater than cubed root of two. So on the left side, we have x greater than or equal to cubed root of two. If f, uh, f of x is decreasing, If you use your calculator, then this number is about 1.25. So that implies that if x is greater than 1.25, then f is decreasing, right? And so therefore, bn, which was n squared over n cubed plus one decreases. Because we are thinking about n greater than or equal to one, so that automatically satisfies this condition based on our reasoning. So the terms will decrease, and so it satisfies both conditions. So given series summation n minus one to the n plus one times n squared over n cubed plus one converges. Because it satisfies the alternating series test. Let's do the next problem. Next problem is five over six minus five over eight plus five over 10 minus five over 12 plus five over 14 minus and so on. So this series can be written as summation n equals one to infinity minus one to the not n, n plus one, because it is the first term is positive times the numerator is always five and denominator is six, eight, 10, 12, and even number, but the first term is six. And so when n equals one, 2n is 2, so we have to add 4. So 2n plus 4 is the denominator. So bn is 5 over 2n plus 4. So we think about bn plus one, and then that is five over two times n plus one plus four. And then uh, bn is five over two n plus four.
So we can easily check that uh, this is decreasing. So that is very apparent. The second condition is about whether limit goes to zero or not. Limit B goes to infinity, Bn, because limit n goes to infinity, five over two n plus four. So denominator goes to large, larger and larger. And so two n plus four goes to infinity. And so five over infinity is zero, right? So it again satisfies the alternating series test. And so the series converges. It doesn't matter if it converges to zero, correct? It's just if it converges? No, I said it should converge it to zero. So what I said here, it converges, but if it doesn't converge it to zero, then oh, it diverges. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Let's do the next problem. The next problem is, it start with minus, minus two over eight plus four over nine minus six over 10 plus eight over 11 minus 10 over 12 and so on. So this is even number. And if you look at this, that is just uh, the natural number, which start at eight. So this series can be written as summation n equals one to infinity minus one to the this time, not n plus one, n, because the first sequence first term um, started start with negative number. So the denominator is just a natural number, so n, but to adjust the first term, we have to add seven because one plus seven will make eight, the first term. Obviously the numerator is an even number to n. So we can say that Bn is 2n over n plus 7. So we think about limit n goes to infinity, 2n over n plus 7. So that is the second condition, but we want to check it. Then uh, that becomes n goes to infinity to n over n. We just uh, think about the fastest growing term and then do the two cancel each other. And that is two. That is not equal to zero. So by the alternating series, the series diverges. I also said you can um, think about the test for divergence. So if you think about the test for divergence, 
then we have to think about the actual term. So minus one to the n power to n over n plus seven. And then it converges to, and so when n gets larger and larger, limit converges to or negative two. So that doesn't exist. So in this case, if you do your reasoning in this way, then um, the test for divergence suggests divergence. So that is another way to prove the, the statement, the, why it diverges. Let's do one more problem for today. So the next problem is summation n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n power, n over square root of n cubed plus five. So in this case, bn is n over square root of n cubed plus five. The first thing we notice is of course our bn must be this part is greater than zero for n greater than or equal to zero. So what we want to show is a uh, bn is decreasing. The, here, when we say bn is decreasing, just uh, the um, in general, it can mean just a uh, except finite term. So in this case, that'll be three. So four n greater than or equal to three. So we want to think about the derivative of x over square root of x cubed plus five prime. So denominator will be square root of x cubed plus five squared. The, uh, the numerator's derivative is one times the next part is x cubed plus five minus This part is x cubed plus five to the one over two power. So we have to differentiate this part as so one over two times x cubed plus five to the one over two minus one will make minus one over two. We are using chain rule. So we have to multiply three x squared times what was on the numerator x, right? Any question? So in this case, the denominator, this one squared is x cubed plus five. So what we want to do is um, we notice that this one, let's just uh, express this one as a power form, then x cubed plus five to the one half power minus one over two times three. And so three over two, 
x squared plus x is x cubed times x cubed plus 5 to the negative 1 over 2. So what we notice is x cubed plus 5 are common factors. So x cubed plus 5, and uh, but the smaller degree is negative degree in this case. So we take that out, x cubed plus 5 to the negative 1 over 2 power. And then what should we write for the, the first one? it'll be x cubed plus five. And then the second one, we already took out this part. And so we have minus three over two x cubed. So for this one, this is one power. If you combine this, then one minus one half will make one half. One half. And so that's the reason we take out and then we write x cubed plus five to the one power here. Any question? All right. Um, so if something has negative power, then we can write it down in the denominator with a positive power. So x cubed plus five was in the denominator. And uh, we just uh, rewrite that in the denominator, then x cubed plus five to the one half power, because that is written in the denominator. And then we have x cubed minus three over two x cubed plus five. And so one times x cubed, right? So one minus three over two, and then that is one of negative one over two, x cubed plus five. And then denominator is x cubed plus five to the one plus one half will make three over two, right? So three over two power, We don't like a fraction here, so we multiply by two on the denominator and the numerator. And then that becomes minus x cubed, this one times this one, minus x cubed plus 10. And then the denominator is two times x cubed plus five, to the three over two. So for this part, if uh, when n is greater than one, that is obviously greater than uh, zero, right? And so this part sign will determine whether the given se sequence can decrease, start to decrease at a certain point when n is greater than or equal to one. So we have to solve the inequality that is minus x cubed plus 10 less than zero. So we move 10 to the right, then we have x cubed less than minus 10. If we multiply by negative on both sides, then we have x cubed greater than 10. And so if we cube root on both sides, then left side, so cubed root of x cubed greater than cubed root of 10. So x greater than cubed root of 10. If you use your calculator, then that'll give you approximately 2.2. So
So we can say x over square root of x, uh, x cubed plus five prime decreases. Uh, this one, just uh, this one decreases. So that was Bn. B actually, uh, the Bn, Bn equals n over, I have to write n over n cubed plus five decreases for all n greater than or equal to three. So it is decreasing sequence. The second condition is whether the given sequence diverges, uh, converges or diverges, converges to zero or that or not, right? So we consider n goes to infinity, n over square root of n cubed plus five. And we care about the top degree term, so limit n goes to infinity, n over square root of n cubed. So that is limit n goes to infinity, uh, n over n to the one third power, uh, no, the uh, three over two power, three comes from this n cubed and uh, one over two come from square root. So if we calculate that, then that becomes n goes to infinity, n to the one minus three over two. That equals limit n goes to infinity, n to the one over two power, right? negative one over two power. So that is essentially n goes to infinity, one over square root of n. What does that mean? n goes to infinity. So the denominator will go to infinity. So one over something will go to zero. So that means the series converges. So that is the last problem I want to present for today. And uh, we have only one more problem in alternating series tests. And then uh, we will move on to 11.7, which is about strategy for testing series. So we will just uh, solve the random problem and think about the think about what test we will use to determine convergence of the given series. So uh, see you tomorrow.